Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. I hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, a lot, a lot of the news floating around right now categorizes itself in the I don't want to use the term stupid news, uh, but I'm I'm not sure. It's a very weird shift in the 24-hour uh, momentum. I don't know if you've noticed it, but uh, a lot of the news right now is like almost like comically wacky in in a way. All right, we'll see. You know, you'll you'll get it. Uh, the most popular news story out there, for whatever the reason might actually be is about El Salvador. Um, El Salvador, for those of you who missed it somehow, was the first official country to announce that they would allow Bitcoin as a form of legal tender within the country. There are dozens of documentaries and videos and stuff you can watch on YouTube about the entire experience, if you will. It was touted as originally something that would benefit everyone within the country, but they're like different versions of that. There are a lot of videos where they show like normal everyday people like literally selling mangoes on the street and how they use Bitcoin. But then it shows like other parts of the country where people are like living quite lavishly because of the Bitcoin that they already have. Um, they were really in the news a couple of years ago after uh, adopting air quotes Bitcoin. Um, and they made it into the news years ago, even more, because the president of the country announced that uh, the country would be uh, constantly buying Bitcoin. If I remember correctly, it was meant to be one Bitcoin a day. So then this news pops up and everyone completely thinks it's like the greatest thing on the planet. It says El Salvador intends to move a substantial portion of their Bitcoin holdings to a cold wallet. This wallet would be housed in a physical vault within the country. This was said by the president on Friday. He said, you can call it our first Bitcoin piggy bank, he said in a post on Twitter. Here's a tweet for it right here. We've decided to transfer a big chunk of our Bitcoin to a cold wallet and store that cold wallet in a physical vault within our national territory. You can call it our first hashtag Bitcoin piggy bank. It's not much, but it's honest work. And then there's a QR code. I'll explain that in one second. And then he has the laughing, crying emoji. That It doesn't fit there at all, but I, I guess if you're trying to be cool. Cold wallets or hardware wallets offer a secure way to store private keys offline. Placing a cold wallet in a physical vault enhances your security by shielding it. Yeah, we know what a physical vault is. So, so many of these stories are really, really, really weird today. As per the statement, El Salvador's Bitcoin holdings were valued at around $407 million as of Thursday. The significance of that is that we've been hearing once again that they've apparently been buying one Bitcoin per day. And have been doing it for a while, but it's only been like a year or somewhere around there. So people were doing calculations and found out that they, the country, uh, has thousands of Bitcoin within their possession. Which led to a really weird conversation that people were having as far as like transparency. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'll put it to you this way. If the country says that they're buying one Bitcoin a day and there's 365 days in a year and you look over and they have 4,000 Bitcoin, people were like, well, why didn't you tell us that you had more Bitcoin? Because it's their Bitcoin, it's their business, they do with it as they so please. Why don't you go on the street right now and tell everyone exactly how much money you have in your bank account? Oh, you don't want to do that? Well, yeah, because it's your prerogative and you don't have to do that and then there were i mean this was the most popular news story i mean it's absolutely ridiculous that this made hyper popular news what was the other news story that ah oh, yeah for those of you who missed it we found out that as bitcoin's price was going higher in price it actually passed by the market cap of silver 
like silver, like the metal that people have been using for like a, a currency and other things for thousands of years, uh, no one spoke about it. It literally went by the market cap of a former usage of currency. Nope, not in the news. But we get news that El Salvador, apparently, um, they've transferred 5,689 Bitcoin worth $411 million to a cold wallet. Bam, instantaneous. Everyone loves it. Everyone's talking about it. I don't, why, why are the priorities within life so skewed? Why does no one actually pay attention to, who cares how much Bitcoin El Salvador has? Like, do you, like, be honest with me. Do you honestly care how much Bitcoin these people have? Do you care that they took their Bitcoin and moved it into a, a cold wallet and then put that cold wallet into a, a physical vault somewhere? Have I made your day? Like, do you feel, but it's, it's so incredibly odd, the things that end up being uh, important to people. And then even more so, there were all these, I, I don't have it on the screen here, and I don't feel like scrolling to find it. There were all these like very rich, wealthy people within the cryptocurrency space who were writing on Twitter how amazing it is that they are so transparent and showing us this is the future, Bitcoin is, and I'm like, you know, there are other things actually happening on the planet. I, it's not that this isn't significant in some sort of way. We know and have known for a while that there was a nation state who was gobbling up Bitcoin every day because they told us. They told us they were going to do it and then they did it. But they have more than people assumed and people were like, what? You have more than you told the public? And it's like, yeah. And then also, from what we understand, according to the wording and me reading all these different articles is that this isn't all of their Bitcoin. Apparently, they have a lot more and they just haven't told everyone about it and people are wondering exactly how many they have now. So, in one of the most popular news stories that we've gotten, and I mean in a, in a while, um, El Salvador has more than 365 Bitcoin. They moved several thousand into a cold wallet it's now in a mountain, in a bunker. I don't know where people put their thousands of Bitcoin. I haven't, I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, and everyone loved it and thought that this was great for the future or something like that. I haven't really deciphered what all of this was supposed to have, um, have meant. That's the popular news. And yeah, let's move on. Also in unclear, but sure, why not? The London Stock Exchange has announced that they will start accepting applications for the admission of Bitcoin and Ethereum exchange traded notes in the second quarter of this year, which is basically right around the corner. The decision marks a notable step in the integration of cryptos and traditional finance. The London Stock Exchange has confirmed their decision through a market notice released on the 11th of March. Prospective issuers interested in admitting crypto ETNs to trading on the exchange are encouraged to engage early to mitigate the risk of delays in the admission timetable. So a lot of other countries in the last like four or five weeks for some reason have been very adamant about not adding U.S. Bitcoin spot ETFs to their markets for whatever reason. A lot of them are probably trying to create their own ETFs. They didn't think that it would be a big deal. It had probably usually has something to do with fees. If you're using a U.S. one, maybe you have to pay fees to the U.S. holder as opposed to your own country making your own ETFs and or ETNs and therefore you pay the fees directly to the country that you're in as opposed to the United States. It always has something to do with money. It's never cut clear and dry. It's never something like, oh, they just don't like ETFs. No, they understand how to make money. So within the same time frame, we've heard a lot of countries announcing that they're going to start the application processes for, so I mean, it doesn't really matter if you say ETF, ETN, ETP, they're all basically the same thing. Exchange traded funds, exchange traded notes, exchange traded products, they all fit into the same bowl of ET something. 
And now, so the, the reason why this one was so unclear is because according to the information, it hasn't made it clear if they're going to be allowing the applications for the United States ones to also be applicable in London and, and for the London Stock Exchange as well, or if this is only going to apply to new companies within the United Kingdom or surrounding territories who are looking to actually have or announce their own Bitcoin or Ethereum ETFs and that can only then trade on the London Stock Exchange. That's kind of what I was alluding to earlier as far as like confusion because it doesn't really say otherwise. Uh, the UK has had a very rocky history when it comes to crypto. A number of years ago, people assumed that they would also not integrate crypto, what's the word, that they would kind of uh, accept it and, you know, allow people to trade and do what they wanted and stuff like that. But the UK, especially years ago, we don't hear about it that much anymore. They had a problem with advertisements on buses and in, in, in metro stations and in airports and next to homes. And it was all these weird things. And you can't advertise this and you can't show this and you can't have ads and you can't. And it was like, OK, can you tell people what they can do? There was a whole weird thing where they were talking about, I think, uh, you had to go through their SEC to be able to like post on something and to do this. And I was like, they don't have those same rules for people buying gold and silver or even getting mortgages. People can jump into a 30-year mortgage and be in debt for 30 years. That doesn't equate to you going onto Coinbase and clicking buy for 15 pounds worth of Bitcoin. It's not the same weight to it. So... Um, the same as every other country who's also been discussing this and trying to have their own or now trying to roll these things out. They see that there's big money to be made. And it's really sad that it always takes like money for people to kind of perk their heads up. Because what there was one country. What was it? It was somewhere in Southeast Asia. Over the course of the last two years, it, not Hong Kong. It, 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 it was some country who announced that they were going to uh, create crypto regulations and then they did it. It took them like a couple of months, but they actually did it. And part of their rollout of the cryptocurrency rules and regulations was their version of the SEC actually had on their website an entire section that if you wanted to get into crypto, you could learn about it. And I mean, they literally had an entire section where you could learn about all of the top coins, what they do, where they were from, the risks that were associated with them. But you also could see like how much money people had. It, it was it was it was amazing. It was, you know, this is what regulators should be doing. You know, you can't just sit there and scare everyone and tell everyone that everything is terrible and horrible and, and, and awful for them when you know that it's made people a lot of money. So if people are going, if people want to do something, they're going to do it. So why not help them along the way and let them know what the market is like, the risks are that are associated. And if they've read through all that stuff, cool. At least you've uh, enlightened them. You made them more knowledgeable as opposed to just constantly being terrified. And no other country has done that. No other country has stepped forward and said, like, let's help our citizens. And as far as I can understand, me not living in the UK, but from all the news I've been absorbing, it's the exact opposite. It's just like, let's make everyone as scared as humanly possible. But we know being scared is a lot more effective to control people than anything else. So that's the, yeah, cool, eventually, the London Stock Exchange at some point. Uh, is going to have applications in the second quarter of this year. I assume they're aiming for December or something like that, which is also another time frame that we got recently as well. I don't think I even had it in a video. Some other country also announced that they're trying to have their crypto rules, regulations, ETFs, ETNs, and all these other things all legal and done by, by December. And it's like, cool. Well, you had about 15 years to do that before, so it's nice to see you know, you're on the train at least now. That's the London Stock Exchange eventual Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF news. Uh-huh. Let's move on. So, I'm, I'm not going to raise my blood pressure with this one. I saw this floating around the last couple of days and I was like, I kind of, I tried my best to ignore it because it's, it's just, it's, it's completely, Completely nonsensical. I don't know, again, if it's because a lot of the people who are writers of articles within the cryptocurrency space are either brand new 
if they don't have, and I say, the, the knowledge of where the market has been or just simply haven't been here for a while. There's a reason why a lot of times the news has revolved around patterns or the, you, like the, the last like 20 or 30 videos, you hear a lot of where people think that Bitcoin is going to go, where the market's going to go, where this is going to happen, how this could be. Because people look at the patterns that have happened before within the market. This is how we know when things are going to move, how they've moved before, what we may be able to anticipate. For some reason, a lot of people took this news and ran with it as if it was something like spectacular, peculiar, no one could figure it out. And it's like, no, it's it's just it's just because we're not there yet and you're very much more interested in trying to create something sensational rather than going outside and maybe going for a walk. So, apparently the news is, it says the ongoing Bitcoin bull run has been characterized by Wall Street's embrace of the long-awaited spot exchange traded funds. It says still, the rally we've been seeing is producing millionaires. They have millionaires in quotations as if millionaires don't exist. This rally is producing millionaires at a slower rate than the 2020 and 2021 market uptrend. The leading cryptocurrency by market cap has risen by 70% this year, setting a new record. It says 72. I, I think this record was, wasn't it 73, 100 or something? The rally follows the past year's 155% surge from the depths of a brutal bear market. According to data tracked by a Paris-located company called Kaiko, K-A-I-K-O, okay, less than, and I quote, less than 2,000 millionaires or wallets with $1 million worth of Bitcoin are created daily. That's significantly lower than the last bull run, which created over 4,000 millionaires per day and over 2,000 wallets with a $10 million balance per day as well. Oh boy. The news, in essence, was is that people are not getting rich fast enough from Bitcoin. The idea that 2,000 people per day are becoming millionaires because of Bitcoin's price rising is not enough for the people who wrote all of these articles. I want you to think of that for a second. Imagine a situation where 2,000 new people per day are literally becoming millionaires and the market goes, well, that's not quick enough. Every article made sure to write in the time frame as well, and I'm so happy they did because it just goes to show that they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Every single person who wrote an article kept on mentioning that this is, this is happening a lot slower than the 2020 and 2021 bull run. Do you know why it's happening slower? Can anyone tell me why this is so different than the 2020 and 2021 bull run? I think I heard someone say it. It's because we haven't gotten to the bull run yet. I don't know if you've noticed. This is why I said before in many other videos, what's happening now is literally unprecedented. We've never experienced something like this before. Because the bull run, the bull run, the bull market does not begin until after the halving. Yes, see, this is why I said a lot of it is stupid news. And I can tell that a lot of people who are writing these articles, they're going by numbers that someone else said. And they're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That's like, that's like me saying right now. Well, the market's not moving up as much as, it, as it's going to in 2025. What's the matter with the market? Is something wrong with it? We're not in the equivalent of 2021. We are not in 2025. We have not gotten to the halving yet. I can't explain the, the, the things that my brain goes through when I, when I have to read thousands of articles all the time and it's like they're written by squirrels. It just doesn't, it doesn't make any, like there's so, so little logic in the things within this space. El Salvador locks up their Bitcoin. I found at least like 19 different articles talking about it. Bitcoin passes by the market cap of silver. 
I think I found two articles and one that was written lightly correctly. Even if there was only one new millionaire created per day by this thing that was created 15 years ago, that would still be substantial. Think about that. If, if Bitcoin had only created 365 new millionaires over the course of a year, after only having been around for 15 years, that what Bitcoin is doing now doesn't make any sense. How quickly we're moving through all of these things. The expectation that we, we should have over 4 million. Why don't we have over 4 million new, new, new millionaires per day? It's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Especially when it also says, and there were over 2,000 wallets per day that had more than $10 million. Oh my gosh, how sad for these millionaires. They're only worth $9.8 million. I guess they'll have to wait till prices go back up. The reason why there aren't new minted millionaires every single day is because we haven't gotten to the having. Remember the significance of, of me saying um, a couple of days ago in the other video, for those of you who were not here, there was an article that was talking about Bitcoin's price movements on the day of the halving, three months after the halving, and six months after the halving. Typically, six months after the halving, historically, we've seen on average around a 51% increase in Bitcoin's price after the having, and even then, it is still not at still not at the previous all-time high. So the fact that we've already go, pew, pew, zoomed zoomed past it is incredible. And then to have multiple, there were multiple articles. You don't understand. There were multiple articles all talking about how Bitcoin isn't creating enough new millionaires per day. Are you people psychotic? Do you understand what it means that people bought numbers on a screen? A couple of years ago, some people bought numbers on a screen. They bought Bitcoin, held it in a wallet, and did nothing. There was no physical labor. They, they, they weren't chopping wood. They weren't creating cities. They created no extra value. And these people woke up one morning, and they were millionaires. And before the bull run has even started, before we've gotten to the having. 2,000 new people. That's, that's, that's 60, that's 60,000. That is 60,000 new people per month before the bull run are becoming millionaires. 60,000. That equates to over 700,000 people, even at current prices, if we just moved with the same momentum. How, how dare Bitcoin not go up quick enough? How dare there not be more millionaires? You know how many people have, but like, there will be, and there probably are, there are going to be over a million people on the planet who've become millionaires just from Bitcoin alone. That's not from Ethereum. That's not from XRP. That's not from Cardano, because that will also create new millionaires. Always, always so surprised at what makes really popular news within this space. It is, it is almost never ending how... I, I mean, not many things can surprise me, but I am shooketh every single day at the news that, that floats through this space. So, yes, uh, we have not entered the bull run. We have bull run numbers, but we don't get there until the halving. That's when everything goes crazy because the supply gets, gets cut in half. So things, that's when... Th so the news is uh, Bitcoin's not going up fast enough. It's not creating as many millionaires as it did in 2021. And, and how dare it? We're, we're, we're not, we're not at, the, at the having yet. I, I don't know how to, I, I, I can't make my words any clearer. That's the, I hope Bitcoin gets it together because, you know, some people are waiting to become rich news. Aha. Uh -huh. Okie dokie. All right. Let's move on. Is this Oh no, this is also one of them as well. This is also This is this is one with a chart. This is this, this is one with a chart showing I'm um, showing how we haven't made that many new millionaires yet. Oh boy. 
Also in, sure, I mean, I guess, why not? Okay, news. According to Jurian Temer, the director of Global Macro at Fidelity, Bitcoin... Ap- Jurian Timmer says that Bitcoin is going to take away gold's market cap. Why did I huff and I puff? Because this was also lightly popular news. The issue is, is that Bitcoin is already eating into gold's market cap. Uh, and the article is about how Bitcoin's going to do it. The, the, the huffing and the puffing came from the fact that we get this news about like once a week, but for some reason, this one ended up being a lot more popular than the other ones. For those of you who are unaware, for the uninitiated, if you will, the idea is that Bitcoin's digital gold, not physical gold. And as we see Bitcoin gaining more market cap and gold not performing as people said that it was going to perform. And we've seen indications of a lot of companies and institutions selling off their gold or their gold pieces of paper or they're from their gold ETFs. And apparently a portion of that money has flown into Bitcoin and into Bitcoin ETFs. The idea is that eventually in the future, Bitcoin's market cap is going to go higher than gold. You see like how we just passed by silver and no one paid attention. I also, and and, and I'll be completely honest, I have a feeling people aren't going to care. There have been so many significant things happening within the space that tend to take shape and or happen. And I've noticed over the last seven or eight years that when the the hyper significant stuff happens, no one really seems to care. Everyone kind of just goes on to the next thing. So gold on the like list, we, we had a list about two or three weeks ago that showed of all the assets that exist, uh, Bitcoin was number 10. No one cared about the fact that Bitcoin was number 10, had been around for 15 years, and was larger than multiple companies and countries. Everyone paid attention to the fact that Bitcoin wasn't number one and wasn't larger than gold. I have a feeling, I have a feeling, when we do pass by gold, I think Bitcoin has to be above $700,000 per coin, Uh, We are probably going to get news that Bitcoin isn't as big as real estate. Why isn't Bitcoin as big as real estate? Will Bitcoin pass by all of real estate? And it's like, if we could just have like one moment to like really just savor the things that we have. It's similar to when we got the Bitcoin ETFs. You know what a decade is? You know how long 10 years is? 3,650 days. Imagine in the news every single day, everyone's talking about Bitcoin ETFs. It takes 3,650 days to get it. And the next day, everyone's like, well, now XRP needs to have an ETF. Where's the Cardano ETF? Ethereum? Ethereum's going to have ETFs. That's the new news. Over and over and over and over and over. So, cool. I don't disagree with his findings, but gosh darn it, we're already well on the way. I don't think we needed another deep dive into how Bitcoin is going to become a multi-trillion dollar asset, especially before we haven't even gotten to the halving. And then when it does, people will go, okay, cool. Well, well, what's the next asset? What what is everyone going to do if if Bitcoin actually ends up hitting like $38 million per coin? Will you celebrate? Will you be very blasé about it? Will you go, hmm? Well, time to take on the moon now. Like, what's the what's the next step? Why is there never any, like, actual, oh, we made it. Look at how far we've come. Look at where the market is now. Look at what we did. Everyone's so concerned. Anyway, um, cool. Also in the news is the director of Global Macro at Fidelity says that Bitcoin is going to begin to take over um, gold's market cap. And it is obviously going to do, I don't know if anyone has paid attention to the world in the last like couple of years, but it's going to do it. Uh, There was also news, I don't have it here because for the love of goodness, uh, I think his name is Peter Schiff, uh, the the, the guy who doesn't like Bitcoin. Uh, There was news apparently that he said that he's really like sad that he didn't get to buy Bitcoin in 2010 and I could feel my blood pressure rising. And then I found another article with him saying that he didn't say those words when other people were quoting from some other thing that he said. 
And it's like, okay, I, I, I don't understand in the year 2024 how people are still obsessed with a a yellow piece of metal. And that's not even a joke either. Like, it's literally... I, I feel like we're so far in the future. Even the fact that we have, like, digital currency now, and it just really... I, I don't... I'm not really sure. So, uh, whether that man regrets not buying Bitcoin or not, I, I wish I could care less than I already do. Like, it's actually, like, be, like below ground how much I actually care. Especially because he probably also owns some Bitcoin. He's also rich enough to just go buy Bitcoin himself. There was an article a couple... Oh my gosh. What was it? Was it Pharrell? No, 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 no. There was some celebrity. Who was it? It was someone about three weeks ago who was like, Oh gosh, I wish I had I had bought Bitcoin. Oh, I'm so annoyed. They, they said that when Bitcoin was like $48,000. And, and I remember when Bitcoin went above 71000 I was like... Well, you you could have bought. Like you're a very wealthy celebrity. Why why didn't you just buy like as you were having the interview? Like just go on your phone and go buy some. Tell one of your assistants. Am I supposed to feel sorry for people who are extremely wealthy who's like, oh, I wish I bought Bitcoin when it was a dollar. I'm worth hundreds of millions, but oh, I wish. It. Just 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 buy some right now. Is is there is there supposed to be a part of me that's like, oh my gosh, Peter Schiff, oh. I really hope he gets some Bitcoin at, at a very good price. No, he's already wealthy. Bitcoin isn't isn't meant for him. It's meant for like literally you listening to this right now and your friends and your family. That's who Bitcoin is meant for. So these rich people, that man could literally buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now and become a Bitcoin millionaire. Nothing, nothing stopping him. And I, and I swear to goodness, if we have any articles... When Bitcoin goes to 300,000 with these people being like, oh, I wish I bought Bitcoin at 70,000. I'm going to like, I do hope you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.